All right, Jenna, are we doing this? When we got married, I made sure that I was walking my best friend, Jenna, down the aisle with me. She loves you. She thinks you're amazing. We are Ryan and Mallory, and this is Jenna's story for GeoBeats. Do you burp in my face? <laughs> We'd always call Jenna kind of his wing cow, um, since she was the one that brought us together. My baby Jenna, are you just waiting by the door for me? You're kind of big, Jenna. Yeah. You're kind of big. We wanted to get married at the sanctuary. It looks like spa day over here. You can have animals around. And we thought, well, Jenna should be his best cow. Let's do it. Two of our chickens walked down the aisle too. When a 1,400 pound cow is walking down the aisle. With horns. With <laughs> horns. It's a little intimidating to people that don't live with her. Or it is intimidating to people, yeah. And so, but I, I was convinced she would be great. And she did great. Pigs actually were the ones that were the only problem. They just rushed up there and were trying to get the cow snacks. It was a good representation of what our daily life is like with just all sorts of yeah. silly things happening. The next day, they went out to look for the other elephants from the baby's family. Life with Pigs started as sort of a sanctuary slash activism effort to help people change how they view animals by meeting them <laughs> firsthand. Get him! And also to have a place for these animals to come and live out their best lives. Come here, sir. <laughs> Charlotte. I lived in Arizona and started following the sanctuary on Facebook. Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. <laughs> we ended up becoming friends and then ended up falling in love and I moved out here. Jenna dominates the world here. I love you. I love you. I met Jenna when she was three days old. Will you join me? No, no. <laughs> Thank you. Jenna was born on a large-scale dairy farm, but she had a twin brother, and so for whatever reason, when there's a, a female and a male twin pair, the female will end up having some of the boy hormone, and so they'll be infertile. And if they're infertile, they're not useful. Jenna had actually been spray-painted, marked to be sort of removed from the herd. I love you, kiddo. Fortunately, the daughter of the dairy farmer, whose name was Jenna, convinced her dad to let her find home, and she ended up reaching out to a friend of ours, and so I went down to Durham, North Carolina in a mall. And that pretty much started like a nonstop sort of bonding best friend situation. You're like a brick. <laughs> I love you, crazy girl. <laughs> I think anyone other than Mallory would be horrifically jealous <laughs> of she's a, Jenna and me because we were she's just... She's a daddy's girl, for sure. As always, the first thing he did was to go out on the porch and say hi. Jenna! Ooh. There you go. I think she wishes that she could move in. Hey, Jenna. She'll follow us. The animals are kind of right outside our house. You want to read? This is not a cow library. You might see like a cow coming up behind this window and her face is right there looking in. The cows are always watching us. We always say the cows are always watching because you'll just be walking through the house at night and you'll look and they'll just be in the darkness, this face of a cow staring at you. And... <laughs> this is startling. There seems to be someone trying to get in the kitchen window here. They're right behind us. Yeah, they're right behind us. Uh-oh. I'm just gonna stand right there and wait for him. He doesn't go out and give Jenna her morning hug. She'll come and she'll move at the window and demand that he comes out and gives her attention. That's good. Make sure he hears you. Carrot drive through. Just like from the outside. Yeah. This is a promo video. It's like a documentary about the carrot drive through. Hey, hey. We have to take both window panes out because her horns are too big. Horns are something that don't even fit through the window anymore. Say, Jenna! We've not tested our window warrants yet. They said <laughs> anything that breaks them, they'll replace them, but I don't know if that's quite what they meant. Cow shaking her horns at them. Oh, oh Polly, Polly. <laughs> you gonna feed me a carrot? 
One of the things that I was told first about cows is never grab them by their head or their horns because that's like fighting to them. And Senna, that's like her favorite thing. Put her head up against me and go right into hugging. I've got a knucklehead for a best friend named Jenna. So she's very much like a human-centric cow. I think she is pretty certain she's like a human that just hangs out with the cows. I'll be back, Jenna. Oh. He'll be back. I spent most nights sleeping in the barn with her and like just hanging out with her all day. And we'd put a blanket over us at night and like sleep in her barn. I'll be your pillow, Jenna. Anytime. When we went on our honeymoon, I think both of us were so glad to be back and we just like ran out and had to hug the cows. <laughs> We've got two other cows. They're all very sweet, but Jenna is like diva. She's going to be the center of attention all the time. No. That's not a carrot. She will come over and like shake her head and get them out of the way <laughs> and then just stand there. Jenna. <laughs> She's very expressive, and you yeah. can usually tell exactly what she's thinking or what she wants, but mostly she just wants to be loved. We had some friends over, and Jenna was just leaning over the fence, moving at us because she was so upset not to be included. Do you want to wear the pig hat? The curiosity of a cow, I think like they are more curious than cats in some ways. And you know, they're helpful like Congress, like nothing will get done <laughs> while they're there. But they really, really, you know, want to be in there in the midst of it and a part of it. So just sunbathing. And cows right. are very emotional. If someone's sad or she accidentally hurts someone, she kind of will get this, like, look on her face. I know something's wrong and I don't know what to do. They are probably the biggest drama queens about getting shot. And it will be, like, drama for two days where they won't speak to us afterwards. Quincy was one of four turkeys when I first started the sanctuary, rescued from basically a factory farm situation. Now he's sort of the yard guard and he's calling for his ladies. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to be separated from his his girlfriends who keeps a close eye on them. <laughs> we try to give our animals the opportunity to go out and interact with the world and, and meet people. Quincy seems to really like going shopping to pick out his own snacks and looking at all the shiny things. People have sort of determined there's animals that are pets and there's animals that are food. Our experience is that there's really no difference in the way that they feel, the way that they interact with us, the way that they love their families and their friends, and the emotional experiences that they have is no different than the animals that we consider pets. My hope is that people can see the idea of like do unto others that, as you'd have done to you applies to everyone, not just humans, because it is somewhat just luck that we're not in their shoes. Jenna is the center of our universe. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> you're going to take it right away from me. We're going to have to do a lot of vacuuming after this. She has to outlive me because there's no way I could like imagine a world without Jenna. Sadness overwhelmed our little teddy bear. Is it possible that Maru left without saying goodbye? Oh, oh, oh here's oh. a dining customer. The dining customer. Sometimes with Jenna, you just have to be prepared to be a headrest. Come here, sir. <laughs> You're just gonna get a mohawk. <laughs> we love you, kiddo. Love you, Jenna.